everybody, welcome back to Talk with Naya. Now, before we start today, let's get some inspiration and good words from our girl, Coco Jones, to start your week off right, okay? Listen to this. I also really feel like for me, therapy kind of changed my trajectory as a healthy human being. Um, my story is industry, but everyone's story, you pick up some traumas that are so deeply rooted in you that you don't even know that that's unhealthy and unnormal. It's just part of the way you talk about yourself or it's part of the jokes that you make with your friends about your life and your future, but you're speaking death over yourself. Like the power of life and death is in your tongue, like in your mouth, the words are powerful. And so I really feel like when I wasn't on this show that changed my life, I wouldn't do certain things so that I could afford therapy. It was just like more important to me to have my mental health right than to be outside or to be in the latest whatever fill in the blank or to look a certain way on Instagram because something in me wasn't right and I wanted to stop generational curses I wanted to be I wanted to be a healthy version of myself and for my kids and for my future you know what I'm saying and for my family so that I was the first one in my family to even talk about therapy and as, as black people, it's kind of like taboo. Like, what's wrong with you? But I'm like, if we can go to the doctor for our health, we can go to a therapist for our mental. Like, that's not crazy or weird. And so for me, I wanted to be that representation for my family. And now all my family goes to therapy. They all have their own, like, counselors and everything. It's not because we crazy. It's just because we want to we wanna heal. And as black people, there's a lot of hurt that has nothing to do with us or anything we ever chose. It's just from generations. And we want to heal those things, you know? Mm -hmm. So therapy has changed my life and also faith without works is dead like when I was in my darkest places I would go volunteer like Come I would go do something else and move my body yes. in another way that had nothing to do with me Because sitting there was just me sitting there thinking and fearing it didn't do anything, you know So these are some things that have really changed my life But but therapy and my words like even if I don't have the time to do my devotion, which I do love like I, I need Jesus Christ Because this is scary <laughs> <laughs> Even when it's good, it's scary because you're scared of losing it. And I'm yeah. like, okay, now there can't be fear on the good and the bad side. Like, this is ghetto. Yeah. Like, wow, <laughs> devil, you're really eating them up. Like, you're creative as hell. But um, if I don't have the time to do my devotion, I will make sure that I'm speaking. Lord, thank you so much for, like, opening these doors. Thank you for this team who doesn't try to change me. Thank you for, like, the fact that I can afford to eat today. Like, I'll find ways to speak positive into my life because I have realized that when my world didn't make sense, my words to myself made sense. And then eventually, the world caught up to my words. Mm. Now that we got all that positivity and good energy flowing, let's get into it. Now, I wanted to talk about La Roach, okay? Now, I know y'all heard about this. He has announced that he'll be retiring from celebrity styling last week, and he has spoken in more detail regarding what is causing him to retire. And a clip of him not having a seat with his clients in Daya at a fashion show made people assume that this is what kind of ticked him off and was like, you know, the last straw. Now, listen to what he had to say. 100,000% retiring. Isn't it always best to leave when you're on the top? So what do y'all think about that whole situation? Now, let's move on to Missy Elliott. So Missy Elliott was told that the music industry needs her in Timbaland back. Missy responded to a fan and said, to be honest, music has moved in a different direction and some artists may think it's too risky, especially if it don't sound like what people are doing right now, then many get scared to try it because it takes more work to break the rule. Now, do y'all think that the music industry needs music like what Missy and Timbaland was cooking up back in the day? Let me know. Now, speaking of music, the City Girls are outside. Future brought out the City Girls during his concert, and the City Girls released another snippet of a new song. You know, we talked about another snippet not that long ago. Now, the City Girls are about to be out here this spring in the summer with some new music. We shall see. And I wanted to talk about Holly Bailey. So she looks great for the cover of the edition by Modern Luxury. Remember, we got the Little Mermaid coming in just a few months. So I cannot wait. Now, let's get into this, you guys, because the R&B girls 
are going at it, okay? Tamar Braxton addressed who she was hinting at when she said she had a beef with a housewife and shared that it was Candy Burris, okay? Candy Burris is on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and she's also a member of the girl group Escape. Now, listen to this. People think it was Eva. No, nope. <gasps> it was not. I know who it is. It was not, and it really did happen. I'm not lying. Like, I'm not looking for attention or drama or anything like that. Right. But that really did happen. It Drew. was not cute. Obviously, I want to address, you know, what's really going on in the press because, you know, I feel like I, I've worked really hard on myself. And I can't help if somebody asks me a question, you know, and I can't help the chains of events that actually, really, honestly, truly happen. Now, um, it, this really all started. Okay, everybody knows that I'm on Dish Nation now, right? And this really all started from a YouTube that Candy put about put out about whatever the issues they had with Carlos King. And I was asked about it. Now, I'm gonna be honest, like I'm not like these other reality people. Like I'm a real bona fide five-time Emmy nominated journalist. <laughs> Difference. So for me, I am not comfortable publicly saying or calling someone else a liar without knowing the legitimate facts and obviously i want to address you know what's really going on. that's where i'm standing with that not i wasn't on no you know you're not my friend i don't want to side with you it wasn't nothing to being messy but my responsibility for my job and my integrity just lied in that or else i just would have said oh she lied but really what i what i did say is i wanted to hear both sides of the story you know there's something in the milk ain't clean just trying to deflect from just outright calling somebody a lie because number one i don't know number two i don't care number three has nothing to do with me okay cool that happened you know i put up a clip promoting the show from what i from my point of view in my story not addressing anybody, not taking sides on nothing, because I, I really don't care, but it doesn't have anything else to do with me, okay? So, weeks go by, four or five weeks go by, and we all have a concert together. And I'm leaving my dressing room to go to my dancers. That's where I'm standing with the dressing room to bring them their new clothes, and I see Candy in the hallway. And I'm like, hey, boo, and I give her a hug, you know, whatever, and she just look at me, and she's like, I ain't King was foul. And I'm like, oh, I, and I honestly truly forgot about it. Right? Um, and I'm like, listen, I didn't mean no harm. You know, I, I wasn't trying to, you know, go against you or nothing like that. It's, you know, I, this is what I just explained to y'all. Like, I just feel like my responsibility is a little bit different. I ain't trying to call nobody publicly a liar when I don't know the whole story. I'm not comfortable with it. And she was like, nah, 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 nah. You said, you said, you said. And I'm like, sis, we, I'm, listen, if I offended you, I am so sorry. Like, you know, dress room to bring them their new clothes and I see candy in the heart. Like, I, I, I wasn't coming from that. I thought, man, you made up a big brother. You know, I wasn't coming for you. It's nothing like that. I really, truly, humbly apologize. And plus, I sent her a DM and I said, I sent you a DM, you know, when your fans was coming to my page. Um, this was a while ago and I'm, I was just trying to let you know that, you know, I wasn't trying to be, you know, malicious or nothing like that. Nah, nah, nah. But you said, and you did, and then, and then, and then you doubled down and put it in your story. I said, listen, Kenny, I'm not trying to go there with you. You know, we in the middle of this hallway. And now, now by this time, people swarming around. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is, we ladies, we shouldn't be doing this. We can go in my dressing room. Yeah, 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 before I take it to the next level. Now, everybody know. <laughs> I ain't, you know, I ain't really here for that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm cool and I'm safe. But I do know how to whip up. And I don't do that. Because I don't, like, I, I wasn't coming from that. When I'm like, look, dog, this is not a letter housewives. I'm not getting paid to sit up here and argue with you like this. I'm about to go sing everybody on this bill under the table. I got, I can't argue with you <laughs> right now. Like, I finna do all that. And then, I, now I am trying to 
completely de-escalate the situation. It's giving bobs and <laughs> cackling and cacklings. And like, then Tadina comes up and like, he comes and get her. And he says something to her. And then he looks at me in my face. Y'all can believe it or not. Looks at me in my face and go, you know what it is. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> now this is a dude. I don't care. Listen, y'all don't see me grow up on the Braxtons. Y'all don't see me go at it with my sisters. Y'all don't see me, you know, kind of like. When I'm like, look, dog, this is not a letter housewise. I'm not getting. Is that me and me and Candy or me and another female can argue all day long? But when it comes to dudes. In another woman's face to physically threaten them and harm them that's when the line is drawn that's when it's like oh it's not about her perception on TV it's not about you know what we have known her to be on, on her reality life years ago because remember I ain't been on reality TV for a long time you know what I'm saying like that's okay I get it but it's no reason for a man to ever step to a woman period and the fact is that is what happened and the other fact is, I wasn't trying to bring nothing up, but, you know, now that I'm on, you know, Peacock and, and Bravo, I went to Andy's show, which is, he's a good friend of mine. We cool. You know what I mean? He asked me about it because one of the fans asked me about it and I wasn't trying to bring it up and I wasn't trying to bring no drama in my way because I am not on that. Is that me and, me and Candy or me and another female can argue all day. So it's like answered the question I tried to deflect from it and here we are but what I'm not going to stand for is people saying what did I do for a man to ever step to me period why are you Nothing. shaking your head Nothing. You ain't no man to step to you that was a coward move and it shouldn't have happened and I addressed it with him and I spoke to him about it and he immediately apologized but an apology after the fact is bull especially when I'm there defenseless should've because happened. he wasn't this is one of those trips where Troy wasn't there, JR wasn't there, like I just, I, well Rob was there, James was there, um, but this was kind of one of those trips where we just kind of, like we had like back to back shows and we just kind of got in and got out, you know what I'm saying, and normally, and I didn't even have security, I must go keep it gangster with y'all, I spoke about this big brother, Y'all call me the victim. I, she's a victim then. And Tamar always starts stuff. But go back in the clips. They didn't age well. I said what I said. You know. The reason why we had beef in the first place. Because that was mean as to me on tour. I'm very, very similar to how y'all see this SWV stuff panning out. My story. my And I said this back thing on Big Brother. Pull the receipts. There's very much a lot of egos going on. And I ain't trying to speak about a show that I don't even watch. And the reason, the reason why I can't watch it is because of the whole sister aspect. Like, I I'm, I go through it, you know, and I went through it publicly with my own sisters. And I don't want to see Tasha and Tamika going through that. I love them. You know what I'm saying? We've all been friends for a very long time. And so I don't want, that's the only reason why I don't watch it. Because it just triggers, you know, I don't, I don't want to see that. But go back and watch them clips. I'm not booked. Don't have to, I don't have to get on a band. I'm just gonna keep it gangster with y'all. Now, Tamar explained the whole situation with her and Candy, okay, and how Candy's husband, Ty, got in her face allegedly. So, this sounds like this was a huge situation. Candy did respond to Tamar and she posted this video clip on her social media. And it's basically where the girl was agreeing to play the victim and she you know, jumped in the water and pretended that she was drowning and just pretended to be a victim when really it was all just like a make-believe setup situation. Now, Tamar, this definitely pissed her off. <laughs> Tamar then made another post saying that she's done addressing the situation and talking about it and that Kansi is deflecting and condoning her man's behavior and that it's abusive and disrespectful and it's never okay for a man to step to a woman. So what do y'all think about that whole situation? I mean, Candy got a lot going on because if you guys aren't watching um, the Queens of R&B on Bravo, which is the girl group SWV and uh, Candy, the group that Candy's in, Escape, they just had this whole situation where they wanna do a collaboration tour 
But once the two groups got together, SWV is down to do it. Escape is down to do it. But then Candy laid down a bomb to the SWV girls and said, well, we want to be the headliner of this tour. Mind you, this isn't like a full-blown tour. It's just one show. So Candy represented her group and said, you know, Escape, we want to be the headliner of this show. We feel like, you know, we should be the headliner. And SWV was completely blindsided by all of this because they thought that they were going to co-headline because they were just doing this one show together. So then it just, it all came down to a money thing, you know, clearly escape things that they should be paid more. So that's why they want to headline the show. And SWV is like, well, we've sold over 30 million records, you know, compared to their 7 million or whatever. So now the numbers are getting into it and SWV looks like they're out, but we have to see how it plays out. But it caused the girls to go on social media and kind of address this episode and everything like that. So let me know if y'all are watching the show. If not, and y'all are interested in these girl groups, you know, from back in the day, definitely check it out. It's pretty good. And that is all I have for today. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.